if you're new here, I'm Taylor. I am a full-time illustrator, a Skillshare top teacher, and cat mom. I run a small shop called Daisy and Emma's Stray Shop where I draw cats, um, almost exclusively cats, and I also do like custom pet portraits and things like that. Um, future video coming all about that and like pricing and all the cool behind the scenes, I guess kind of cool stuff behind the scenes small business wise. Um, I'm going to try to say this at the beginning because I always am bad at it. Uh, if you like cats, if you like art, and if you like cats in art, then I suggest you give this video a thumbs up because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and I would love for you to subscribe. I'm going to be trying to upload once a month. I did that for a while. Um, back at it in 2022. The world's crazy, so we're all just doing our best. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. It would probably be helpful if I told you what today's video is about, but I'm hoping that I wrote a good enough title that you know. Um, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes um, of my digital drawing series that I'm working on, and uh, it's basically the, the working title right now is uh, Cats and Snacks. So um, I'm drawing cats with snacks, <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to watch the time-lapse replay of me working on it, and I'm going to kind of explain to you um, what my thought process is and how I went about creating the piece. So um, before we get too deep into it, I have my iPad here. Um, I don't remember what generation this is. It's like the 10.3? Is it a three? We're gonna go to about iPad. It's basically the iPad that kind of sucks in that um, you have to like put this thing in here, but I just charge it separate. You don't need to know that, it's fine. Oh, about iPad, cool. Um, this is the seventh generation iPad, and yeah, you don't need the model number or anything. So yeah, this is the iPad. I'm so sorry. I'm very rusty. Um, let's just start over. Okay, we'll just rewind real quick. Okay, so this is the seventh generation iPad. It's like the 10.2 inch. I have the first generation uh, Apple Pencil and I am using Adobe Fresco. Um, I work between Adobe Fresco and Procreate. However, I've been obsessed with Adobe Fresco and I'll kind of explain to you why as I go through the process. I will have the time lapse up on screen somewhere. It might take over the screen sometimes. I'm just gonna be playing it back on my iPad and we're just gonna talk through what I did and why I did it. So let's just freaking do that. So to get started, um, I typically sketch in my sketchbook. Uh, I have a hard time uh, sketching from scratch on a digital surface. Um, I'm definitely much have a traditional art background, even though my degree is in um, digital art. I have a degree in uh, creative technology, um, but just drawing on a piece of paper is better. So if you'll see, I did the first one, if it's gonna let me pause it, it's not gonna let me pause it. Um, I did the first pass on a piece of paper. And then nothing fancy, I have a little cover on my camera. I just took a picture of it and um, sketched over it. After I sketched it out uh, again, I went through and started making adjustments. So the first sketch was fine, but I didn't really love like the position of the bag. And I also didn't love the chips. Um, they just didn't feel like chips, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, so what I did, and uh, for the record, I'm using um, the pencil. It's like the standard pencil in Fresco. It is amazing. It feels kind of like a 2B or 4B graphite pencil if you um, have used traditional art before. It basically just means it has a softer lead. I really like it. So um, I pulled up a reference on my computer of a bag of chips, and I decided that I wanted to redo um, kind of how the chips laid so they looked more like natural chips. And then I wanted the cat to be kind of like nestled in the chips. I felt like they were very separate from the chips the first time I drew them. And I also wanted depth in the bag. In, um, in order to get depth in the bag, I needed to open the bag up so you could actually see inside of it. Whereas before the sketch, um, 
it like you could see inside of it but it didn't feel deep it just felt like it was like flat because it was uh i decided that i didn't want to do um like a bag logo design i feel like it was going to take away from the the cat and i wanted the cat to be the main focus if you can't tell this series the cats are going to be like i guess this big or the food is giant um i just like the the juxtaposition of the cat like all up in the food so either way you look at it either the food's giant or the cat's tiny so once i was happy with the sketch and uh i will preface this this is a pretty detailed sketch for me i don't don't normally um sketch that detailed and do some shading but i had fun with this one i thought it was super cute and then uh as you see i pulled reference from an image um I love a certain artist's color palette, and I will put the artist on the screen um, as well as try to tag them in the description. Um, I loved her color palette, but I also have a color palette that I use. So um, this illustration of, is of a calico, which is normally referencing my cat Daisy. So uh, there's a cream color that I use for her fur. There's an orange that I always use, and then there's a brown that I always use. But I kind of wanted to pull some purples and teals, and I really love this illustration. So I pulled from that. And then from here, I tried to do what I typically do when I'm doing traditional art, which is um, do an underpainting of another color to give it um, depth. I think the main thing with this one that I was working towards is creating more depth. I feel like a lot of my digital illustrations uh, in the past couple of months have been really lacking that. So I was working on that. And then my main, main thing that I'm really working on with digital painting is I want it to feel like my traditional painting um in order to do that i'm trying to make sure that i'm using brushes that make me happy but i'm also using them in a way that i would use a paintbrush so obviously this is shaped like a pencil but i'm like how would i have applied that um if i was using a paintbrush and say gouache because gouache is my favorite and i will put the brushes up that i use they're all um free uh they're the kyle t webster brushes that uh, fresco gives you access to so working on that again underpainting and um i was adjusting some shapes i was some shapes were getting a little wonky i'm also trying to work on like not refining things too much i'm very guilty of that because it's really easy to, con to control z or double tap um to undo in digital work but my favorite thing about my traditional work is that i paint and i mess up and then I fix it. I don't erase it. I can't erase the paint. Um, and sometimes I will start over, but most of the time I don't. Um, my aunt always uh, did crafts with me and she always would help me figure out a way to fix something if I had messed up instead of just scrapping it because then you're kind of wasting the material. So definitely credit her for that. So I did some adjustments like if I know that like in real life I could have painted over like when I have like the little orange area and there was like too much, I like painted over it with the white instead of just erasing it. So those kind of things. Keep going. Again, I'll put the brushes up that I'm using. I'm using about three or four. Dude, these chips, I had a really good time with these chips. Uh, if you'll see there, I did a selection. So I wanted, the chips are on two separate layers. There's the top chips and the bottom chips. And um, I did like a selection so I could get a hard edge on the one area because none of my brushes really have hard edges and I don't want brushes that have super hard edges. So that's what you'll see me doing there. But I just had a freaking good time with these chips, um, which is weird for me. I don't know, normally render stuff this much. Also, if you see it flash um, from black and white, uh, I have a, a layer on top of all of my layers that is just a black fill, and it's just a pixel layer. If you use Fresco, it'll ask you pixel or vector. It shouldn't matter, but um, mine is a pixel layer. And what I did is I changed it to saturation, and I turned it off and on to check the contrast just to make sure everything's working. And then I just rendered the chips, and they're beautiful, and I want to eat them. And, uh, yeah. Oh. I also added a shadow and I did something that I know other artists do. Uh, I put the shadow in roughly and then I took a really awesome, I think it's like the gritty eraser and then I marked um, out, like I carved out some of the shape and I just love the texture and I'll put a close up of it. Um, beautiful. I love that. I will tell you that I finished this piece and I was like, holy shit, I did this. So 
that's always good. That doesn't happen often. So yeah, then I adjust the colors, put my signature. Uh, this part too, I put some highlights. Um, I think I just had it on an overlay. Um, I just picked a lighter color. Put that on top and, and we're done. Um, I feel like I talked a lot, but this is kind of the point of the video. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, I kind of just wanted to go like step by step on my process because I know when I watch other artists talk about their digital process, process especially, it's really helpful because I don't know, like I like I said, I've done traditional art for a very long time and uh, digital art still eludes me. I can definitely do it, but it doesn't feel the same and I'm constantly striving to make it feel as similar to traditional art as possible because for me digital art is a way for me to take my traditional tools with me um, very easily like everything fits in here um, like all of the colors of the rainbow it would be like if I had like boxes of paint um, so that's the main goal for me is to be able to replicate things in the best way that I can that still feels good um, since this is portable and it's really easy for me to take on like vacation so yeah um, again I hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you do please don't forget to give it a thumbs up I would love to know your favorite snack in the comments below I this is the first illustration that I've done for this series but I want to have at least like probably I'm gonna be brave here. I think I wanna have at least 20 of cats and snacks um, that are either gonna be prints, stickers, or both, um, even t-shirts maybe. So please, please, please let me know what your favorite snack is in the, the comment section below. I would also love for you to subscribe if you like this video. Um, I make a lot of art videos and uh, art-related vlogs. So thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.